Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! Hey Chris. Everything's fine, obviously. I, I told you I'd keep an eye on the place. Told you nothing bad was gonna happen and that's exactly what's happening. I mean, I know your heart's in the right place. It's it's fine. Like, like I said, I'm in complete control. I can handle it. By the way, just in case, maybe we should try and find a, a new headquarter to see what's on the market, you know? Better safe than sorry. <laughs> and I'm really sorry. We wanted to create the most realistic lava possible within After Effects. No third party plugins at all. We think we've done it. What do you think? Let's start off by hey, making her. Huh? Adrian. Hey, it took hey. me a while to, to find you. Oh, oh, Chris, sorry. To... Uh, the office is full of lava. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how this happened. You I know were... exactly how it happened. Let's start off by making our lava texture. What? In a fresh comp, make a new solid and apply the turbulent noise effect. Turn the contrast up to around 250 or so and the brightness down to negative 30 or 40. This will give us a good balance of lightness versus darkness. Chialosculo. Chialos... Chialosculo. What? Chialosculo. Chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> All right, thank you. This will give us a good balance of lightness versus darkness, but if we zoom in, it looks kind of blurry. An easy way to fix this is to just turn up the complexity value. To get some additional detail, we can duplicate this effect and make some changes to the brightness or contrast. Under transform, bring the scale down. If we set the blending mode to add, it's gonna combine with the previous turbulent noise effect to give us something a little more interesting. You can do this as many times as you want until you are happy with the level of detail. To get some color onto this, add a CC toner effect. Set the number of tones to pen tone, that's five, and then select some fiery colors. We left our highlights as white, then we changed our brights to a pale yellow, made our midtones a yellow orange, and for our dark tones, we made them a bright orange, and then our shadows, we made a dark red. Yeah, we didn't really want to have pure black in those shadow areas, but more of a deep red to make it seem like the brighter areas are illuminating the darker rock areas. Yeah, I know. Oh. If you're happy with the colors, but not so much with the distribution of the colors, grab a curves effect and drop it before the CC toner and use that to fine tune. Whoa, that was a <laughs> fine tune. Let me try and beatbox one. <gasps> Whoa, that was a find. You might notice that our lava effect also has some bubbles that, uh, you know, bubble up. Bubble up. To bubble do up. this, let's make a new comp, and it could be tiny. 100 by 100 pixels is fine. And let's add a new a white solid and draw a circular mask on it and feather that out. Let's give it some opacity keyframes as well. Am I hearing a cow? What is this? I have a cow. The way you pronounce opacity. Opacity. We're gonna animate the see through it -iveness. We're gonna start at zero and we're gonna slowly fade it on and then quickly fade it away to simulate nice. popping. I bypassed my pop filter for that. Let's bring that into our lava texture comp, make a new solid and apply the CC particle world. We'll bring the longevity up to keep our particles in play a little bit longer. In the producer tab, we'll turn up the X and Y radius, radius you got, you got this. radishes <laughs> to be big enough to cover our comp. Under physics, change the velocity and gravity to zero. Under the particle tab, change the particle type to a textured square and use our animated bubble comp as the texture. Change the texture time to birth. Change the birth and death sizes to match your scene and we'll set the color to a nice orange that matches our lava texture. Let's set this layer to an add transfer mode as well. These bubbles are gonna be pretty subtle, but it's definitely a nice detail to have. Oh, show. Finally, to make this whole thing move, let's add an adjustment 
adjustment layer with a turbulent displace effect. We're gonna turn the amount and size up just a little bit and animate the evolution. You can do this with keyframes or a simple time expression. That is it for our lava texture. Now let's get this onto some footage. Yeah, <laughs> footage. If your footage has any camera movement, you will need to track it using the 3D camera tracker. If it doesn't move at all, you can just eyeball the placement, figure it out. Now, uh, if you want, you could animate this in with masks or with a mat, or you could animate it to move up and down to fill the room up with lava if you want. Uh, whatever you decide to do, just go ahead and do it now and then pre-compose this layer along with the camera if you have one and move all the attributes into the new composition. This is looking super duper flat. So the way we're gonna take care of this is with a displacement map effect. Revolutionary. Yep, <laughs> drop that on and just turn up the vertical displacement until it looks. No, wait, no, oh. no, no, dude. Come on. That looks really bad. I think you so did a bad, bad job on this. All right, I got a new plan. Let's, right, uh, right. let's try. Uh, here's the new plan. Duplicate the lava layer, add a fast box blur just to soften it up a little and poke its eye out. Ah! <laughs> it's never cried before. <laughs> on the <laughs> original, reapply the displacement map effect, set the duplicate layer as the displacement source and set the source type to include effects and masks. This will make it so the displacement effect takes the fast blur into account. Bring the vertical displacement up just a tiny bit. Don't go crazy like Chris. Bring it up to like seven. Two. Nah, two. Sorry, I lost my mind there a little bit. Seven isn't actually that crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, two isn't much either. You can barely see it at all. But the way that we're going to increase the height of the displacement is by actually duplicating the displacement map effect itself. Highlight it and hit Control V a couple of times until the displacement is to your liking. To make it look more like the lava is lighting up the whole room, we're gonna turn the background orange. You can do this very easily with an orange solid set to a color transfer mode. Or, you know, you can use a curves or levels to have a little more control over your color. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. Chris, you're on the spot. Give us another way. You can just go and uh, get some paint at the local paint store and uh, paint your screen orange. This is not working. <laughs> We need a different technique. I figured you were gonna say a tritone. Oh yeah, that's better. Let's go with that. Okay, this is your computer now. This is gonna be mine. <clears throat> Finally, we'll add some glow over the whole thing. We can do this on an adjustment layer. Turn your threshold up so only the bright hot spots are affected and give it a pretty wide radius. And that, my friends, is how the lava effect is done. Nice, good job. Thank you. You, you also. <laughs> Thanks. When other people have attempted this effect, we have noticed that they tend to use and repurpose water splash effects as lava splashes. No. While we like the overall concept of this, it doesn't look thick enough. Your heart's in the right place. Yeah. Instead of using water, try using some debris burst effects. We have a few of these on footagecrate.com. Just color them orange and add some glow. Maybe, if you're feeling like it, add a fireball clip as well. Ooh, that sounds like a cool idea. Or should I say, Warm. Toasty. Warm. Oh, yeah, toasty. We also used the new Crates Camera Shake script, or as I like to call it, the Crates Shaker. The Crates Shaker. To add a little jolt of camera motion. This script is available to you pro users. If you're not a pro, go ahead and sign up and download the script. It is super awesome, and we're gonna use it and promo it and talk about it all the time. What do you think of this script, Adrian? I like it. I think it's our most useful script to date. Nice. For the portal shots, we did use some practical lighting on set. For the portals themselves, those are from Footage Crate, but we also have a whole video going into them in more detail. If you want to watch that, how about you uh, click the eye? <laughs> As for the lava flow effects themselves, those are just good to go. You can find them on footagecrate.com. They were made using real flow. For those of you who want a closer look into our project file, good news, the project file is available to everybody for free. Link is in the description. Click Link it. Is in the description. Download it. Make lava. Okay. Unfortunately, Adrian, this does mean that our awesome studio is burnt down. I think we lost the airplane, actually. 
It was really expensive. It was so expensive. I think we have found a new place, but we need a good name for it. I am thinking uh, the State of Crate. Like the Crate State? Yeah, that's like better. That. How about Crate World? Crate World, okay, thinking big. I got one. How about Crate Britain? How, how, about, about... how about the Crate Barrier Reef? <laughs> <laughs> How about like a crater? Like it's, oh, that's our old place actually. Yeah, it's just a crater. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you think we should call the new place that you haven't even seen yet. Later, crater. That was good. Thank you. You said that real good. Yeah. Chris, give me a break, man. I've done an end card before, I already know. Yes, I've told them that there's videos here and here that they can watch. I don't have to tell them to subscribe, they already know. Come on, dude. By now, everybody already knows how to make it awesome. Oh, the lava's back. I gotta go, dude. I gotta go.